Welcome back to 16 weeks of SATs with me, Andrew. Now, this video is a little bit of a special bonus video. So having looked at some of the comments and feedback from teachers and the most recent sessions, I really felt like this bonus video, which is gonna be about partitioning and the, and the skill of writing little notes down, breaking up numbers into smaller parts and using that knowledge to solve SATS questions. I thought this video would be really useful. So it's a really quick video, um, five or 10 minutes, dive straight into the skills, and we're gonna look at how we use partitioning and jotting to be successful in SATS. Now that is covered in this book, SATS Like Ninja. One of the things I wanted to mention, which I haven't in the other videos is, um, as a result, lots of schools and teachers and parents have been getting in touch, asking how to get hold of SATS Like Ninja, which covers everything you need to know for SATS. It's available on Amazon, um, I think for $4.99 or $4.29, something like that. Um, and it covers everything in maths, everything in SPAG, everything to do with reading as well. So it is a bit of an essential guide to so definitely get your hands on a copy of Sats Like a Ninja. Um, but other than that, there's nothing else to, to talk about really in this video, um, other than we're gonna dive straight into the partitioning and jotting strategy where we look at addition and how we can partition numbers to add them very quickly. And then we'll look at some multiplication and look at how we do exactly the same before moving into some questions. There aren't any SATS examples here. It's a much shorter video, some quick questions, some quick modeling from me, and then hopefully you can go away from this video really having mastered partitioning and you can use that in all of the other videos over the coming weeks in the run up to your SATs. So good luck, get stuck in, and I'll see you on the other side. So in this quick video, we're just going to be looking at partitioning and how understanding the place value of individual digits can really help us move quickly mentally through some calculations without needing to, to use a written method. We can just make some quick jottings, so partition and jot, and get to the answer that we need. So again, if we just look at these before we have any sort of calculation, if we look at the number 42, then what we can see here is that we have our ones column uh, and the digit two, and we have our tens column and the digit four. And essentially what we're trying to understand from this number is that that two represents the number two, but this four represents 40, okay? So by understanding, by able to partition the number and seeing that we have two separate parts, so we have 40 and two, which is 42, um, that we have two separate numbers within that. And again, if we look at um, 136 and we go right okay so we've got a six we have a three here and then we have a one which make up 136 but if we partition 136 what we end up with or what we can see is that this six is actually worth six this three is actually worth 30 or represents 30 and this number one is actually representative of 100 so within 136 we have 130 and the number six. So if we can see those values and be aware of those values, then mental calculations can be made much easier. And again, if we jump over to this number of 297, and again, we just partition. So the seven would become, so we've got a seven, we have a nine and we have a two. Again, hopefully you've jumped ahead of me and you can see what these numbers represent. Seven is representative of seven ones because this is the ones, this is the tens, and this is a hundreds column. The nine is representative of 90 because we have nine tens and we have two hundreds, so this is 200. So within the number 297, we have two hundreds, we have nine tens, and we have seven ones. And by it, by being able to see this in the questions that come in the next slide, we can really start to do some quick mental maths um, with a few jottings. So let's have a look at how we can use this skill to answer some questions. Now, one of the first principles, again, that we need to look at, I'm going to be using lots of colours, etc., just to visualise this for you. You wouldn't do that in these questions, but 
what we're looking to do is to is to identify the ones and the tens together so let's have a quick look so if we were looking at this first question of 47 add 39 we could very easily identify our ones and our tens columns now all i would be looking to do here and now it might be that with this question you can just add this in your head and find the answer or you could just with the number 39 thing i'll add 40 and take away one so we can see the answer very quickly but we're just trying to get into the habit of partitioning so with partitioning i'd be thinking i've got 40 and 7 and i've got 30 and 9. so really really quickly what i'll be looking to do is just to add mentally so from this position here it might be that all of a sudden just doing this makes this much quicker to solve the problem now in my head i'd be thinking okay seven add nine equals 16 and 40 add 30 equals 70. now very quickly again i look at those and think right i like the look of this i have six we'll get rid of that i have my ones column again and i'll change the color to green i have my ones column and i have my tens column but quite quickly I have one ten and seven tens, um, so I can add them together and make 80, and then the six goes on, so we've got 86 in total. Or again, you could just go, well, I've got 70, and I've got 10, so that's 80. Or it might be that you just see 70 and 16 and go, 70 add 16 is 86. So it might look like a complicated way of, of, of answering the question, but essentially what we're doing when it comes to more complicated problems is we're just breaking down the numbers quite quickly. So if we were doing this question again, I might just be thinking, right, well, I've got 40 and 30. And the reason why we jot things down is just to make, just to, so we don't have to hold the information in our head. And then seven add nine is 16. So 70 add 16 is 86. So I would get my answer that quickly by just partitioning and jotting. And again, on the next one, we've got our ones, We've got our tens and we've got a hundred in this column, we, in this number. We didn't in the other number, but that's absolutely fine. So in my head, I'm just thinking, right, my ones is six, six add seven. So we have 13. Then I've got 20 add 80, which is a hundred. And then I just have another hundred set up, don't I? Okay, so then all of a sudden I know I've got 100, I've got 100, so that's 200, and then I'm adding 13 on. So the answer is 213. And we've just done that quickly by just making some jottings around, quickly adding these up, because this is easy to do, all right? Then this is easy to do, 20 add 80, and then the 100 is just left. And it's just making sure that we add up all these parts. So again, we can get to answers quite quickly. We could do a column addition, that's absolutely fine. But sometimes just making some quick jottings is just as effective and just as quick. And again, now with multiplication, we can do some quick jottings with multiplication. Now, you might see these questions in your sats and think, oh, 5 times 26, 3 times 47. I need to do a short multiplication or a grid method. Now, that's true. You could go to that strategy. You may just know it mentally. But also by just making some quick jottings, there's, there's nothing to stop us from, from answering the question. So again, we've got just identifying the different numbers that we have here. So I've got the 6, which is representative of 6, and the 2, which is representative of 20. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to times this number and this number separately by 5. All right? And I'm just going to make those jottings here. So I'm just going to do 5 times 20, which I know is 100. And I'm going to do 5 times 6, which is 30. And then the answer is obviously 130. So quite quickly, just with a couple of mental calculations, partitioning this number into its tens and ones, and then multiplying both of these by five and making some quick jottings. So once I've written five times 20 is 100, the reason why it's important to write that down is because I then don't have to hold that information in my head. Then I can do five times six, concentrate on that. And then both these pieces of information are here and that one's just obvious, it's 130, okay? But five times 26 might have been just a little bit challenging in your head. And again, if we look at the next question, we've got 
a seven and we've got four and we're multiplying three times 47. But again, if we understand that this seven is just representative of seven ones and this four is representative of 40, then essentially we can do three times 40 and three times seven. And we'll just quickly do that over here. So I just do three times 40. It doesn't matter where you write it. Three times 40 is 120. I'm using my known facts of three times four is 12. And then three times seven. And again, writing it down here is important because I can just forget that for now. I know that's right. And now I can just concentrate on this bit here. Three times seven is 21. And again, straight away, I can just, most of you will just be able to go 120 add 21. Well, that's clearly just 141. So very, very simple, because we would you're spotting two, 20 at 20 is 40, and then you've got the one, so the answer would be 141. So again, although that looks quite time-consuming, if you just go through the process without all the colours and everything else, that's a very quick way of answering what could be a problematic question. And again, we'll just look at a couple of other examples and then in the next slide are some questions for you guys to have a go at. So we, again, me just highlighting this for you and understanding the fact that we have this, which is representative of four, and this five is representative of 50. Okay, so again, I'm going to multiply those both by eight. So I've got eight times 50 and I've got eight times four. So quickly, that one in my head, I've got 32. 8 times 50, I'm maybe not sure, but I know 8 times 5 is 40. So 8 times 50 must be 400. And then again, from there, that's really easy. It's obviously just 432. All right, so we'd have, you know, answer 432. Correct. Again, if we move on to the next one, quickly highlight. So we've got 2s, we've got a 3, and we've got a 1. And again, what do they represent? Well, we all know that this one is two, this three is representative of 30, and this one is representative of 100. So I'm gonna multiply each of these by six. And again, I want to jot it down just so I don't have to hold it in my head. I'm multiplying three different numbers. I don't wanna forget and make a mistake. So a quick jot of six times 100, and a jotting is just a note, 600, six times 30, and I know 6 times 3 is 18, so 6 times 30 must be 180. And then 6 times 2, obviously, is 12. Okay, so in my head, I would probably just add up these first. So I know that that's 780. So again, I'm just making a note of that. And then 780 add 12 is going to be 792. So quite quickly, we can get ourselves into a position of answering the question. Because again, this one, putting this into a column... Uh, multiplication, I can see us making errors. So again, very straightforward. So let's have a go at some questions. Right, so partitioning, partition and jot practice. So again, these first numbers, all I want you to do is to just partition them. You're not going to carry out a calculation. You're just going to make some notes on your paper and tell me what. So in 37, you would be making a jot in and you would write 37 down and you would be telling me that that is worth 30 and that is worth seven, just so we're getting in some partitioning practice. Then we have some addition problems, very straightforward. And again, the, the jottings that you make are, can't really be right or wrong. It's just whatever you want to write down. By writing things down, it means you don't have to hold that information in your head. And then again, we've got some multiplication problems as well. Very straightforward, but these ones especially are very common on the SATS papers. And children sometimes use a lot of time doing grid methods and so on, when actually you can just partition shot and get the answer using your known facts. So have a go, pause the video, and get stuck into these partitioning and jotting questions. Well, that is partitioning done. I hope you found that useful. Obviously, the question set at the end was fairly small with some basic addition and subtraction, but ultimately, we need to go away from today really understanding the value of each number, thinking back to all the lessons that I've covered so far, place value is so important and understanding that if we have a number like 147, that we have ones, tens and hundreds in there and we can multiply them or add them all separately 
And my biggest tip, my biggest SATS tip, is to just make notes. That's part of the strategy. Partition and jot. So we're breaking things up, but the jottings are super, super important. It means that we don't have to hold that information in our heads. So if we're doing three different multiplications to get an answer and doing it quickly, we write things down as we go, and that's going to end. we don't then have to hold that information in our heads. And it means we can concentrate on what we're actually doing, knowing that we can just go back and then add them numbers up separately at the end mentally. So with a bit of practice, partitioning and jotting is one of the most essential skills that you will need and use in your SATs. So hopefully that was useful. Definitely practice this. Um, and that is this week's video done. So good luck. On Sunday, we're going to be releasing a new video, which is all about known facts. So how we use things like our times tables to help us solve much more difficult problems, okay? So definitely check that out. Please make sure you subscribe, like the videos, please leave me some comments. Um, and this is goodbye from me from 16 Weeks of Sats.